Tinker Crate engineers, you're going to try the spin art machine today. Now, there's a whole bunch of cool electronics in this, and they're going to talk about things like a breadboard and um, resistors. And I'm not going to stop and explain most of this stuff during this making of this crate because. This video is just for the making, but what I'm going to do is put some information about different electronic stuff in Google Classroom and Seesaw so you can get some background information. So, first step, oh, I need scissors. First step is I'm going to get some scissors to pull with my supplies. So, again, a couple things before you start working on one of these. One, please check with people where you're living and make sure that it's okay for you to be making this. Okay, this one might be a little bit messy, although from the picture, it looks like it stays in the box. We're going to use the crate for part of our machine. But um, please check with people and make, always make sure you clean up afterwards. Tell people if you're using things that are sharp like scissors so that um, somebody knows what you're doing. And we're going to get out all our supplies first and look through. The, I did look through the directions a little bit before this. But um, before each step, we want to make sure that we have everything out. And we've looked through the directions ahead of time, which sometimes Miss Gross forgets to do. So for step A, prepare the box. We need the empty box. So that means I don't really like doing this because I like to have some place for the garbage. So I need the empty box. It's not going to fit so great in the video, so I'm going to put it to the side where you can't see it right now. Okay, clear stickers. And again, feel free to fast forward through this video part where I'm getting out supplies. The reason that I'm showing you all this in a video is so you can see how long it takes to do this. You're going to see my video is however many minutes long it's going to take. And that's how long it's going to take you. So that means you need to be able to work for that amount of time. Okay, empty crate, clear stickers, paper guide. Blue sticky foam donut. Okay, and as I've said in other videos, I like to set out my supplies if possible exactly the way they are in the picture because that helps me not forget anything. Okay, this donut is not a donut yet because there's a thing in the middle. Black sticky foam donut. Okay, I'm assuming that it's these two that you can't tell they're black sticky foam donuts unless you look at the side because they have stickers on them. The motor. So this doesn't really look like so much like a motor, but in the picture. Okay, the wood disc. Okay, and I've said this in other videos. In the wood disc, there's this silica gel. This keeps it from getting from moisture from accumulating, but this is really bad for people to stick in their mouths and for pets. So make sure you get this in the garbage so you don't want your dogs or cats or rabbits or whatever other animals you have chewing on that, and definitely don't want siblings chewing on it. Okay, red sticky foam strips, red sticky foam arcs. So an arc is a part of a circle. I'm not seeing those. Be a problem if I'm missing pieces. Hmm. Oh, I see it. So I didn't see it because this uh, white side was up, so I couldn't see it. Okay, I'm just going to leave those on the sticker back. Have to rearrange some of this stuff a little bit. I'm going to move some of these things down. So this, these pieces are big, so I can't really arrange it exactly like it is in the picture. So 
which means I'm probably going to forget something. Okay, uh, white sticky foam circle. So again, we have a whole bunch of stickers on this. I'm not going to take these off. Gear and paint guard. That's almost everything that's in the box. Okay, so prepare the box. Press hard on the sticker to seal the crate and prevent leaks. Oh, okay, sorry. Step one. Turn the Tinker Crate over and find the four holes. Okay, so first I'm going to put the crate... No, I'm not putting it back together. I'm just turning it over like this. So you want the top open because you're going to be putting something inside here. Okay, and this had some sticky piece of... There's a piece of tape here, and it's sticky, and now I have cat hair stuck to it. Okay, so so we're going to cover up these holes. So turn the crate over, fold the clear sticker over each hole, and press down. It says press down really hard, so unfortunately I put these clear stickers under the crate. Press down really hard, so you want to cover those holes because... Okay, so be careful of this. I'm peeling the sticker off, and it's not sticky because it's kind of stuck too hard to the paper. So, so I'm going to go on a different piece, a different edge of this sticker. But we want to cover off these holes really well, center it as well as you can. It says press down really hard because at some point there's going to be paint flying around in this box. You don't want it coming out because I tell you right now, that's going to make somebody mad if you play with this and you end up making a big paint mess. So we're going to cover all these holes with uh, okay, be careful because you don't want to have to try to pull it back up. So, I guess I must be a little bit nervous when I'm making these videos because I keep doing that. I touch things down before um, I'm ready, and then, and again, this is coming up with this backing. That means it's not sticky. So, I'm going to try a different corner so I can peel it off. There we go. So, it doesn't. We need it to be very sticky so we can really seal it on the box. I would also recommend that um, when you use this later, you make sure you put something down underneath to protect wherever you're using it. Okay, don't count just in case it gets more messy than we think or you don't, it, this isn't sealed well enough. I would say make sure you use it on something that can be cleaned up easily or put something down underneath it. Okay, so I'm feeling this here. I feel like it's pretty sealed up. Okay, so that was step one. Step two, turn the crate over and open it. Place the paper guide inside so it's in the center of the bottom. So this is the paper guide. And you want it centered in the bottom. If you want to really be um, good about it, you can, and this says back and front. So the back is going to be towards the top, where the top is, that's the back of the box. And the front is this part without the back attached. And then center it. If you wanted to try to measure, you could. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not sure that it's that important, but um, you could also measure and make sure that it's the same distance from each side. I don't right now. I don't have a small enough ruler to get inside the box to do that, which is why I'm not measuring. Otherwise, I would because I like to measure stuff. Um, step three: pop the center out of the. Okay, so. So I'm going to move some of these supplies now that I'm, I'm, I know that everything's here because these are in the way. Uh, Charlie, okay, so my cat's going to walk through the video as usual, so hopefully won't. So pop the center out of the sticky blue foam donut. Point the notch towards the bottom left corner. Okay, so this is popping the center out. Now I'm going to save this because I'm thinking... Even if I don't use it for something in this, I could use it for something else because <laughs> it's a sticker. Um, point the notch, so that's the notch, 
toward the bottom left corner. So that's here. Oh, and it says on here, notch in foam here. Um, and stick the donut into the hole in the guide, then remove the guide. Okay, so all we need to use this guide for was to really center this donut thingy. Put it in the right. Well, let's see, that makes me want to measure even more. Okay, you could like fold a piece of paper and make sure it's the same size on both of those. Again, I think most of you won't do this, so I'm just going to keep eyeball it. Um, all right, so. Oh, I know. I can measure over here. Excuse me while I go away and get a ruler. It doesn't matter if you measure in inches or centimeters, whatever works for you. So that one's not long enough. So I think a lot of you are measuring, so you're not going to be able to see this because of this clear ruler. Um, I'm going to measure. Okay, I'm going to see which works better. Remember, always start at the zero on the ruler. So this is about 10 and a quarter inches. Let me see if it comes out to an even number in centimeters. So this ruler unfortunately goes from 7 to 7, which is annoying. So that'd be 7. Oh, actually, this ruler just has inches on it. Sorry, my bad. So we're measuring in inches. So from 0 to, so this is 10 and a half inches. So that means 5 and a quarter inches would be the middle. So that's right here. So I'm just looking in the box. Yeah, that looks good to me. So now I will put this in. You do not have to measure. It's totally up to you. Foam notch here. Be careful. Don't stick the donut to the guide. Try to center it in the hole, which once again I didn't do very well. But there we go. So that's how you want it. Okay. I need this. Now I don't, oops, I don't have a box to put the garbage in. So I'm going to take one of these, this empty bag and start putting garbage in here. Plus a little silicone thing is in there. Okay, it's always easier if you do this, if you clean up your garbage as you go. I don't think I'm going to need this again, so I'm going to put it aside. Okay, step four, stick a black sticky foam donut to the back of the motor. So here's the motor. Where's this black? Here's the ones that was hard to tell they were black because I couldn't see that side. So... And it also, we're going to need to pop that center part out. So I'm going to try to do it before I take it off here because, again, I might be able to use these sticky foam things for something. So I kind of want to keep this. So I'm going to stick it on this paper and then take the donut off. Um, to the back of the motor, turn the motor so the wires line up with the notch. Okay, first let's stick it on the back. So I'm assuming that the back is this part because the other part has a thing sticking up we're going to need to use. So I'm going to stick this on the back and then take the backing off. And the wires line up with the notch. So here's the wires. So I want these to be where this notch is. Now, it doesn't say. Turn the motor eyes, line up the, press it down into. So we want this to stick to the box. So that's why that little notch is there for the wire. So this means it has to go inside the blue foam donut. <laughs> okay, not just sitting on top. And then the notch is so that the wires can stick up easily. Okay, mine doesn't seem to be going in, so again, you might have to mess around with it to get this to really go inside. It's a pretty tight fit. Okay, so the wires are sticking up. Um, the wires should, let's see, okay, the wires should point up and out of the front of the crate. What?
Okay. It looks like there's supposed to be a hole here. I don't see a hole. So... I'm going to undo this part on the wires. I guess it's not a hole yet. I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's not a hole. Sorry. It's something else. So the wire should point up and out of the front of the crate. So this is the front. So you want this in this direction. Press the wires down into the notch. Okay, I already did that when I put this thing in. Use a strip of red sticky foam to stick the wires to the bottom of the crate. Okay, so we're going to do this. Straighten this out. So we're going to take one of these red sticky foam things and hold the wires down with it. Then use a second strip to stick the wires to the side. Okay, so we're going to put here and here. So we want it so the wires aren't flopping around. So I'm going to put one there, and then I'm going to bend the wires. And put one on this side. I thought that I thought where they were showing the foam before was a hole in the box, but it's not. So I'm going to put this. I don't know about halfway up. I don't think it's that important. They just don't. They want the wires to be stable and not moving around. Okay. So I think that's fine. Okay. Step six. Find the four arc shapes etched into the wood. Okay. So now we're using this piece. And these shapes. These aren't really arcs because arcs are part of a circle and since they have this little flat piece, um, it's not really an arc, but that's okay. Um, okay, so we're just putting the foam on top of these shapes. So I'm going to start at one end and push it down to the other end. I seem to be, oops, okay, I seem to be banging into one of my cameras. Um, I don't think it's going to matter if they're not perfectly lined up. Get them as perfect as you can. What I notice with the, these kits is the sticky foams are very sticky, so you can't really pull them back off easily. And if you do, you might end up having to glue it. So, and usually there's some extra pieces, but there's not with this foam. Okay, so we have all that. Um, Flip it over. Step seven, flip the disc over and find the etched circle. Etching means it's like there's it's dug in there. Um, in the middle of the disc, find the gear and turn it so the bump is facing up. So on the gear, there's a flat side and there's a side with a little bump where something's going to... The motor's going to stick into that. That thing's sticking up on the motor. It's going to be stuck on the gear. Okay, so we're going to want this so that the bump is up so we can stick it on the motor. Use the white sticky foam circle to stick the gear down on the edge circle. All right, so here's a white sticky foam circle. I think I'm going to put it on the gear first doesn't matter. You can do it either way. Just make sure you put it on the side that doesn't have the thing sticking up. Oh, garbage. And then I want this in the middle, so I'm going to try to match my edges as well as possible, as good as possible. I'm doing it from the edge and then sticking it down because I haven't been so perfect at lining these things up with the etchings. Okay. Flip it back over. So now the red foam's up. You want this thing down because you're going to put it in the in the motor. I'm noticing my motor is not flat. It didn't like get inside that circle really well. Um, 
that can be a problem when you're I'm thinking I should have put the black foam inside the circle not on the motor so you might try. <laughs> I guess you're not going to know that if you're not watching the whole video ahead of time which is actually a good idea okay so um, flip the wood disc by over push the gear down on the shaft of the motor so this piece sticking up is the shaft we want the shaft to go in this hole so so you're going to line it up and then push it down and it should do that Okay, so um, step nine, fold and crease the tabs on the paint guard. So here's the paint guard and you have all these things that already have lines in them. You're going to want to fold all of these things over ahead of time. So anything with that line, you need to fold it. These little tabs, you need to fold it. You know, and this has a sticky thing, which I would wait to take off. And you're going to fold it. Actually, this one goes the other way. Because this is going to go in the box. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try it first before I peel off the sticky stuff. Because, as I said, this is really sticky. Okay, the wires are going to come out the hole, so I'm not sticking anything yet. I'm just trying to make sure it fits in the box, how I want to situate it. Actually, I'll, I think I'll peel it off after I do that. So you need to get these edges down. See, this is why I'm doing this first, without, well, it still has the backing on it. So the wire goes up. If we want this all the way down or not. So, fold and crease the tabs on the paint guard, peel the backing off, then stick the tab to the lid of the crate so it lines up with the crease. Oh, okay, so we do not want this pushed down. You want it, so you want this lining up with the, the lid right here, it looks like. Yeah, okay. So what I was doing was not the best way to do it, but I did want to make sure it fit, so that's fine. We're not going to be pushing it down, so we are going to want to um, peel this off first. Fold the side tab down into the crate. The front tab should catch over the front of the crate. Okay. So first, I want to line this up with this crease. So I'm just trying to get the crease lined up first before I push anything down. Okay, then we're going to put this inside. These tabs go on the outside, so that stops it from being pushed into the crate. Just curious if this will close. Yes, it will. Okay. So, good. So step 10, fold the side tabs down and into the oh, <laughs> and into the crate. The front tab should catch over the front of the crate that will hold the guard in place. That's confusing, sorry. Oh, these side tabs are in. And so these go over the front of the crate and these go inside the crate. I think. So this is going to hold everything in place. Honestly, I might want to tape that down too. Okay, so. Let's see how much time we have left. Okay, so my time's going to run out on my one camera, so I'm going to restart that one. And then we'll splice this together. I kind of don't like the way this is not staying flat. So, I, later on, we'll see how it goes, because I might want to pull this up to do something. But I might, at the end, I might want to stick some tape there. It's totally up to you.
Now we're going to hook up the electronics. So I'm going to move this out of my way for right now. And not too that far out of the way. I'm going to need it. I don't need. Okay, so again, getting out all my supplies. So. Okay, and again, I'll um, talk about resistors and stuff like that. I'll either give you some information where you can find out about it, or else I will do a video or maybe both. Okay, so I need my res three resistors. So the resistors are in this little package. It looks like there's six of them. So since it says I only need three, I'm just going to cut this. Make sure if you do that, you can just put out all six too. But um, I'm just going to put out the three resistors and put this aside. The breadboard. mean this thing because I don't see a breadboard that looks like the picture. This is not the breadboard. Oh well. Okay. Again, maybe missing a piece. I do not see a breadboard at all. Well, that will be bad. Breadboard mount. I have the breadboard mount. Oh, the breadboard's a little. Got it. I was looking for something way bigger than that. Okay, the breadboard. The breadboard mount. Oh, phew. White sticky foam rectangle. So that's on this. I'm not going to take those off. White sticky foam squares are also on this. Battery. Okay, there's plastic on this battery. You want to take it off first. Make sure the battery stays good because if these um, things touch anything else, it kind of uses up the battery. And battery pack. Red sticky foam strips. I only have one left, so I hope you only need one. And scissors. Um, meet your breadboard. A breadboard helps you collect, connect electronic components. See the numbers along the edge. So this is pretty hard to see. There's one through seven on one of the edges. You can definitely feel it. But it's only on one, the, one of the long edges. Looks like a little Lego. Okay. Um, so if you stick something into a hole in line one, so this is line one, so that means that anything that you stick in line one, those are connected to each other. Charlie, no. Okay. So everything in line one is connected. Okay, so step one, trim off the ends of three resistors. So we're just going to cut these wires instead of trying to pull them out. Okay, make sure you get this stuff in the garbage, these little wires, if a pet or a kid eats them, are not going to be, they probably will just go right through, but they're sharp and they're metal, so you really don't want anybody having them in their stomach. Then fold the wires down into right angles. So hopefully you know what a right angle is. It's a 90 degree angle. Looks like an L. So right angle or the side of like a square or a rectangle, you have that right angle there. I think you know that. Um, I don't know if you know that in second grade who got these crates, but you should know it in third through fifth. Okay, so, so form into a right angle or an L. So 
Step two, press the first, stick the first resistor into the breadboard so the wires go into line one and line three. Okay, so we need to, oh, we need to cut off both ends, my bad. Okay, so basically your, pull the wires down at right angles. Okay, so the first resistor, Go, wires going to line one and line three. So line one is here. I think I've done this one, I guess, before. Put it in there. And line three, and let's see. Okay, so this is pretty hard to see. Let me just go somewhere else. So line one and line three. Okay, you don't want to really, you want to just Put them in where the wires fit when they're bent at right angles. I'm going to bend my other resistors right. Oh. Bend my other resistors. These wires are pretty small. They're very bendy. Okay. Um, I guess you have extra resistors, hopefully, because um, these wires can break off. Try not to, but I think they gave you extra resistors for that. Okay. So line one and line three. Step three, stack the second resistor between the lines in lines two and line five. Okay, so actually this isn't looking exactly like the picture, so I'm going to do it exactly like this picture. I don't know how important it is. So this was at the second one from the top in line one, and the... fourth one from the top in line three. And then in the second resistor is in lines three and five. So again, the second one from the top like that. And then the other one's line five and line seven. It's the same thing. So, nope. Okay, so I'm looking, trying to see the pattern and my pattern doesn't look exactly right. So I'm noticing I'm doing something wrong. So two, five, seven. And this one's too far. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna have to turn this a little bit so I can see it. So Second one from the top, second one from the top, second one from the top, second one from the bottom, second one from the bottom, second one from the bottom. Okay. So, and you can see that they're, they're kind of in a line. Now, I'm not sure how much it matters to be exactly. You just need to make sure that you have the first resistor in line. Um, sorry. The first resistor in line one and three, the second resistor in line three and five, the third resistor in line five and seven. Okay, because remember, anything in seven lines up, anything in five lines up, anything like that. Okay, so um, the knobs on the back of the breadboard go into the holes on the mount. So we have these mounts. Step four, use the right sticky foam rectangle to stick the breadboard to the breadboard mount. Okay, and again, these have little holes in them that you're going to pop out. I should have tried to pop out before I took it off there. And then I'm going to save them just in case. Oops. Stop my timer by accident. 
All right. So. So the numbers need to face the battery area when you put it on here. So that means that the numbers are here, so it's going to go on like that. Okay, so I'm going to put it on here first. Okay, you can put it on the board first if you want. Make sure my numbers are lined up facing towards the battery. I'm going to actually pick this up to do it so I can push this through. Push it down hard. Be careful, these resistors, they do twist. Okay. All right. Um, step five, place the battery into the battery pack and put the cover back on. I've had problems with these before. So, um, I like to make sure it's off because once I put the battery in, it's going to be on. you got to press down a little bit on these covers to get them off. I struggled with this the other day. There's these uh, little bumps there. But you got to press down because there's a tab here, and you have to press down hard enough so that when you pull back, it goes down. Okay, the battery, the spring always goes on the negative or the flat end. I like to put that one in first because when you press down the spring, the positive end with the thing that goes out. I know this is going to sound weird, but... I say it pooches out, and pooch and positive both start with P, so that's what helps me remember. I know that's kind of nutty, but anyway. So I'll put the battery in, slide the battery case back, the top back on, and yay, did it easily that time. Okay, step six, line up the battery pack with the breadboard mount so the switch is facing up. Okay, yeah, you need to have the switch facing up so you can turn it on and off. And here, it ha it's all illustrated here. It says, this, so we want this switch this way. So the wires are going to the right, like that. Okay, um, then use two white sticky foam squares to prep, to stick it down. It was sliding around, which didn't make sense because I didn't take the back off on the other side. Okay. So sometimes you can just feel it when you, ah, when you haven't done something right. So I'm going to push this in. Get rid of our garbage. Okie doke. The battery's down. Step four. I mean, sorry, step four. Step seven. Stick four white sticky foam squares to the back of the breadboard mount, so that's back here. Then stick it to the front of the crate just underneath where the wires are sticking out. Okay, so let's stick up the crate again. Wires, okay, so underneath the top. Oh, that's why, aha, so that's why they have this cutout right here. So the wires can come out again. I don't know. I think I might tape this down later. So we're going to... Sorry, what did I just say? Okay, so the breadboard's facing up. The battery wires are facing that way. And then we're going to be bending these wires over to it. So I don't think this has to be centered because you need, the, so you're putting it, actually, it's not centered. You're putting it under where this notch is right here. So we can hook the wires up. So, four sticky squares. Okay, be careful. If you turn this over, you don't want to smash your resistor wires. And again, if you don't want to watch me sit here and stick all the squares down, feel free to fast forward through parts of this video. What you 
I'm doing this in real time so you can tell by how long the video is how long it's going to take you to do this. That's gross. Broke a bunch of little fingernails. It's very hard to get these things off. this part I will probably speed up this part a little bit ah! okay so let me double check I want this facing up and I'm going to put it close to the top of this this is where this is cut out and the wires are coming down so like that and my battery pack is off. You leave this off until you're ready to go, okay? Because now you got batteries in there and you got hot wires. Hot means that electricity can go through them. Okay, so we got that stuck on there. Oh, now we're going to cut out part of the crate. All right. So cut off the front corner of the crate lid, then make sure you can close the crate completely. So, so we're cutting off all of this, it looks like. So we're cutting off this thing. Um, I'm going to go to... This will allow you to store your machine. Okay, so now I can. Yep. Yep. Okay, so that's good. Let's get rid of some of this stuff off our work area. Okay, so open the crate again, connect. The red white. What? Sorry, I got distracted. Open the crate again. Connect the red wire from the battery pack to the, so you're connecting red wire. Oh, see, now this thing flies up, which is, again, I think I want to take that down. So, connect the red wire to the red. And from the inside of the crate to the battery pack, connect the black wire to the black. No, we're not connecting the black wire to anything yet. Then use a foam sticky strip to stick the wire to the front of the crate. Okay, so we're not doing anything with black wire yet. But you want to stick this wire to the front of the crate. So we're going to push that down with this last foam strip. Um, so the way they have this is... This doesn't have to be exactly like the picture. You're just going to want it out of the way. You don't want to put it on top of this because in case you want to disconnect the wires. Because basically if you're not using this, you probably want to disconnect it or take the battery out, one or the other. You can't take the battery out because the opening's on the other side, so you want to disconnect the wires. So don't put the foam strip on top of the where the wires connect. Okay. Um, step... 10, stick the black wire from the motor into line one on the breadboard. Okay, so line one is over here, and I don't think it matters which one it goes into. I'm just going to stick it on the top. Okay. Step 11, stick the black wire from the battery pack into line one. So these are both going into line one. So they're, that's why we did it second from the top and second from the bottom, so you'd have... 
Okay. So it's in line one. So both of the bat the black wires from the from inside and from the battery pack are in line one. Step twelve. Flip the switch to test it out. The wood should start to spin. Okay, let's see. So now I'm gonna turn the battery on. <gasps> Yay, it works! Alrighty. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off. If it doesn't, make sure there's nothing getting in the way. Check the motor's running, all that stuff. Okay, checked it, nothing's in the way. Okay, create a spin art. Oh, okay, that's what this stuff is for. So when I was looking for the breadboard, I thought it was the paper, so the breadboard was much tinier than I expected. Okay, so they give you some little piece of paper for spin art. Okay, create spin art. Here's the part where, so I'm gonna move, get all this other stuff out of the way. All these, I have like extra little sticker things I can use if I want for something else. I don't know. Some of these we haven't used, I think we need. I feel like this, hello. Um, so you can save these for something else or if you sometimes needed to use it. Um, if you have to do something over, that's fine. So I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna put it in one of these. Charlie. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. Watch this. Charlie. What's it doing? Psst, psst, psst. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. Because he's probably gonna stick his paw in there in a second. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Okay, so I'm putting all the little stickers in a bag so I can have them for later if I want them. I'm going to save one of the bags for this paper. Why do we use instruction? No, that's garbage. That's garbage. Okay, so let's see if we can make some spin art. So we have to pick this up. This is bugging me because it's not straight. Um, turn the motor off and stop the disc, flip the paint guard up, and place a paper sheet in between the foam pieces. Oh, okay. So, so these foam pieces are paper guides. So that's going to hold the paper in place. Be careful not to get it stuck under the foam piece, because then it's going to be stuck to it. Okay, so that's the paper guides. So let's see. If I spin this around, yep, it's fine. The paper's not flying out. Okay, it says, although most, although your paint will wash off most services, it can still be messy. Wear an apron or clothes you don't mind getting dirty and put down a mess mat to protect your work surface. Okay, so I do not have, I have something on that I don't want to get dirty. So, maybe we won't make the spin art. I'm going to grab a t-shirt to put over my clothes that I'm wearing just in case. Excuse me for a second. Something that I can wash easily. We'll cut this out of the video. All right. And I move the camera once again. Charlie? Nope. Okay, so. Okay, protect your clothes. Now this is just a pillowcase and a sheet I have on the floor, so I can wash that easily. Okay, so um, step two, turn on your spin art machine. While it's spinning, slowly drip some paint from a paint pen into Oh, now I see why they gave you extra resistors. Okay, so paint pens. So I guess we're going to see how messy this really is. Um, there are little tops in the paint pens. Oh, so I would suggest you probably shake these up. You know what? 
that's weird. Okay, and there's some extra stuff that you can um, read on here about changing your resistors. Oops, see, I already made a mess. So, uh, put the patch caps back on right away. And once you put that drippy top under your pen, that works up. So, yeah, you'll see that in some of the videos. So, what's really weird about these pens is they they screw the opposite way that you would expect, or at least that I would expect. Okay, make sure you put the top back on. So you're putting these um, dripping tops onto the pens to use them. Ah! Awesome. And then you're putting the top back on before you use it. These tops are going to have a little paint in them, so you want to put them somewhere that, like on something, a piece of paper towel or something else that you're not going to get messy. So again, make sure that you check with somebody about making a mess. Okay, um, save that for later. Okay, so you're supposed to turn the motor on. I'm not going to do much on this because, honestly, I'm not in a place where I can make mess. Drip some of that in there. I think you can hear the paint hitting the edge of the box. It's kind of cool. Ooh. Can't really see exactly what's happening. You can probably see it better than I can right now. All right. So as long as I can hear that paint hitting the edge of the box, I'm going to let it keep spinning. And I'm just going to leave these in for right now. But when you're done, you should take these tops off. And as you can see, I have paint all over my fingers right now. So do it someplace and then put the other tops back on so the paint doesn't evaporate. All right, I don't hear it hitting the edge anymore, so I'm going to turn the motor off. and pick it up now as it slows down it's probably fine for you to touch it so there's my spin art for that one this has pretty thick bunch of paint on it so I would put this somewhere where nobody's going to step on it and it's going to not mess anything up so the other way they say you can do it, and you can see there's paint on the edges of the box and stuff. That looks like interesting. You could put paper around the edge and make a like long strip and then get the, the paint that goes on that because it's kind of pretty. Like a border. Okay, uh, the other way they said to do it is you can try, try it this way. So put some paint on it ahead of time. how that looks. Oh, and that's my camera saying we are done. What does that mean? Oh, my disk is full. All right. That's interesting. Oh. 
There's one more piece of this where you can change the speed by doing different things with the resistors. Um, I'll let you read about that yourself. It's in the directions. But now that I already made a mess, I kind of want to see what this comes out to. Okay, so this was a different way. Instead of dripping it in, you put the paint on the paper ahead of time. Close up everything. Okay, so when I didn't do a great job on where I put the wire, I should have put it down a little farther. Let that spin for a minute or so. So again, I'm just going to let it go until I don't hear the paint hitting the box anymore so much. I'm like listening for popcorn when you don't hear the kernels popping anymore. Okay, so I'm doing that off now. Let's see how that looks different than the other one. Let's see if it does. I feel like that's less messy, but maybe not. This, I can tell the paint is still not dry, so tr don't touch it where there's paint. Oh, this looks really different. Okay, um, eh, maybe I should have put more paint. Definitely a different pattern. Um, or you could put some ahead of time and then also drip on top of that. That would be interesting. So play around with it. They give you some pieces of paper. Plus you can always cut your own. This is a little bit more like um, cardstock. You can cut your own. Make sure you put this someplace where it can dry. I can kind of, you can tell from how shiny the paint is, the part that's wet and the part that's dry. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but like right here, this orange looks more dry. This is still very shiny, the blue, so that part's still wet. So I would let it dry for maybe like um, at least 30 minutes or an hour. Depend, dep it's actually, sorry, it's going to depend on how much paint you, ha paint you put on it. Okay, there's some more information on here about... changing their resistors to change the speed. You can read that on your own. So the resistors, res okay, no, I'm not gonna try to explain it here. Um, so it just gives you some suggestions to move the wires into different rows and that kind of thing. Okay, so you can try that to see if you can speed up and slow down your spin art machine. So make sure that you get permission to make this, especially since it's a messy one. So ask permission, make sure you clean up all your mess, and if you've got paint anywhere, make sure you clean that up. So where, um, probably should have said this at the beginning, I'll put it in the, put it in some text in the video wear something that you can wash easily. Okay, I'm putting my paper back in one of these plastic thingies so I can save it and not get it dirty. Again, I have some little extra foam pieces I can keep somewhere else. We have some extra resistors, um, which I'm gonna put in with my foam pieces. Like that's this. And this is the paint tents. Okay, so I'm gonna put the resistor, extra resistors in with the foam. And have all that together, put my paint pens away. I'll put the tops back on them later. So for right now, and I would suggest you do this also, since I'm not putting the original tops back on, I'm putting them in this bag with them, because you're gonna wanna store them with these other black tops if you're not using them for a while to keep it from the paint from drying up, okay? I got my paints, I got my extra foam stuff, I got my paper, here's my machine, and get the garbage out of the way. Don't need this anymore, so that's it. So you made a spin art machine. Have fun with it. Send pictures 
put please post um, pictures and videos in Seesaw. Um, there's this, also this Tinker Zine that has some interesting stuff in it. it. Has some tricks. It has different things that are interesting that you can check out. If you do anything in here, also I'd love to see it. Okay, make sure you clean up your area. Okay, remember the paint that's inside here is also wet. So, I'll close up this whole box. Okay, so I'm seeing I should have put this wire someplace else. So, I can't really move that foam, but I should have put it more down. You're going to want to be careful of this piece, so if you're storing it someplace, make sure that this isn't going to get smashed against anything. So if you're putting it like in a shelf against the wall, make sure this side goes in. And that's it. Have fun. Please post your work and what you thought about making this. And I will post some um, information about electronics and resistors and conductance and that kind of thing. And I hope you will do those too. Bye.